Yeah, we are back. So guys, let me tell you. So in the past two weeks, we tried to do things differently by posting a video. So it didn't work out. So it means we have to do it this way every week by getting people. I know that you wanted to see more people, different people on the platform. So today we are discussing women and how they react to love, what women do when they are in love or when they are looking for love. And tonight I've got wonderful women here with me because it's Women's Month. So we're gonna be talking to women and we want to hear from them what their experiences are around love and what they can share with us to, to, to help us when we are in love or when we are not in love. You know, is it good, is it bad, is it right, is it wrong or is it okay? as it is. So I've got Unati, I've got Memory, and I've got Lysia. They're going to introduce themselves, and then we're just going to go into it uh, immediately thereafter. Unati? Hi, guys. Thank you, Matt. And hi, everyone. It's great to be on the platform again. My name is Unati. I'm a businesswoman, and I'm a trade um, human behavior consultant. And tonight I am so excited to be part of this amazing discussion, which obviously is a hot topic. So we're hoping for a good one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Memory. Um, good evening, everyone watching us, wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, my name is Memory. Uh, born and bred in Johannesburg. Uh, I'm a project manager for an HR and accounting corporate uh, in Johannesburg. And I'm very delighted to be joining um, the ladies tonight and looking forward to the session. Thank you. And Tunisia. Hi, girls. Um, and maybe there's some guys, I don't know, but- uh, <laughs> Everybody, we, want, we, hope, we are hoping that everybody <laughs> is watching. Yeah, we can learn from each other, right? So um, my name is Talicia and I am a, an, I'm a, a divorce mediator, but um, my heart is actually in relationships and saving marriages as a relationship coach. And Matsaling and I met when we did our Imago facilitation course. So I love Imago therapy and I just want to see people happy and in love and in the process trying to do the same. So hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for, for being here. I think, Tilesia, you just mentioned something important um, about where we met, uh, where we were learning about uh, the Imago um, um, uh, uh, facilitation program. So in your opinion, um, how, how do you think Imago can help um, uh, uh, women? Because you know how they say women are always like yabba, yabba, yabba. We don't listen. <laughs> So um, how can Imago help us as, as women? Well, Imago, based on the dialogue, is very efficient in the sense that if you want to discuss something con conflictual or something that may cause um, uh, a, a, dis a discussion that may cause a fight or conflict, then you can arrange with your partner to sit and have a decent a grown up conversation with a, a specific dialogue, you know, where we just basically listen to each other and um, we don't enter into that very, very big trap mm. of saying, you never listen or you always do this or, mm. um, you know, getting into a person's character rather than being in a position where you say, listen, love, I need to have a dialogue, is now a good time. And mm. then you sit and you have a structured conversation with a few basic rules, a few basic rules of engagement where both parties can really listen to each other and hear each other out. So I think that regard, um, it saves a lot of relationships from, from falling into uh, that trap of not hearing each other, but saying a lot, but not hearing. Because we often don't hear with our ears. <laughs> We, we listen with our wound, there where we are yes. wounded as a young girl. Maybe we weren't seen, you know, and then mm. we feel rejected by the smallest thing. And then we react from listening from our wound, if that makes sense. That, very much, very much so. 
So uh, women are known to not really listen and they speak into the relationship. And uh, is it because women have got expectations about what love should look like? Uh, Unati, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts around the reasons? Because in my opinion, a lot of problems that happen at home, at work, everywhere, it starts with relationships and uh, people being unhappy in their relationships and then they take it out mm. into the workplace into mm. other other uh, uh, environments so what is it that women can do to sort of tone this down or understand what they are going through and how it impacts their surroundings because i think it's very important that we we look at ourselves and how we impact the world so Unati, what, what, what would we say about what women, uh, women's expectations are about love and what they expect to, to get from their partners? Sure, what a, a big thing you just asked me there. But in my opinion, um, I think women should learn to find out more about themselves because in finding out about oneself, you learn how to be comfortable with you. A lot of the times in relationships, we have expectations about things that we're not comfortable with ourselves outside of the relationship. So I think relationships need to be about a woman first, especially for women. Secondly, relationships occupy a big part of our lives. They are the biggest part of our work. They're the biggest part of our businesses, biggest part of our children, biggest part of our physical, how we look. Our relationships are biggest. And I'll say biggest because we are constantly measuring ourselves within the relationship. If I do this correctly with myself, am I okay? So, and we bring these things, these insecurities and all these things that we don't feel comfortable with ourselves, we bring them into the relationship. And that's where you start to have these expectations and somewhat unrealistic expectations and forget that you're dealing with another human being altogether. And women are catalysts in understanding what relationship needs because they have a nurturing, a motherly kind of trait that they have with them. So it's key. I think it's very, it's to the advantage of a relationship because it's going to be able to give you what you want. Emily. Oh, really? So do women get what they want out of relationships? Memory, of course what you do. Think? Of course you do. <laughs> Memory, what do you think? As a young woman, um, what are your experiences around looking at how women behave in relationships? What, 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 what are your experiences and, and what can you bring onto the table? Yeah, I'll be quite honest. Uh, my experience is really quite limited in that space um, because I haven't been around much. <laughs> However, what in the little time that I've been in that space is that people come into relationships with past traumas um, that they've not dealt with. Um, and you have a certain expectation of what to expect. You do not go there with, with a open, an open heart or a, 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 blank, a blank check. You go in there with, he must be like this, he must do this, or he must not do this. And then the minute those things start not going the way you perceived it, that's when things start going wrong. And we take a step back. You entered that space with a wrong mindset to begin with. Um, and also not letting your guard down. Back to past traumas. Just because X treated you this way, you think Y will treat you the same way. And now Y goes into a space that is not a fair, a, a fair ground because he is now um, being compared to someone that he doesn't know. Um, and you're living up to expectations of someone you've never met. And it just spirals out of control. And really, you, 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 miss, you miss out on the low-hanging fruit, um, on, 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 on experiencing the true 
epitome of what love is, I think. Mm, mm. So, so you see, like to, tonight, we've got people that are coming from different aspects of learning about, you know, like you mentioned something so important about past traumas. And there's always this denial about our past experiences that we bring into the relationship. And a lot of women, because of their experiences, they come in, like you said, wanting to see something different. But from what we have learned, it is never about that. Uh, when you start to understand why you keep on attracting the same kind of people, the same kind of experiences, then you start to attract the different people that you want to attract into your life. So maybe Unati, Tilesia, from, from your, your knowledge uh, that you have gained through your studies, maybe you can bring that onto the table. What really happens? Here's a woman, they've been experiencing problems. They want something different, but they've got this, the script of a tick box of what the man or the partner needs to be like, and it doesn't work. So what is it that we can do? What, how can we make people understand that, that there are many underlying issues that if you just gr grasp those things, then your life could be a, a much, 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 much different. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to just jump on to that one before mm. I lose my train of thought. But mm. for me, it would be for you to let your guard down, break the wall, allow yourself to be vulnerable, um, but also allow yourself to be vulnerable to an extent that is because the other gender can also take that and, and really throw it back to your face, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. let your guard down and experience the person. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's what's on my mind now. How, how I'll do right. that. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Let, let's hear from the gurus. Yes. Uh -huh. The gurus. Yes. Well, I'll give it a go. Matt, I want to piggyback on what you said uh, pertaining to the script, you know, that script that we have. And I, I appreciate also the comment um, which was made pertaining to being vulnerable and allowing yourself that space to, to actually venture into something that's new. But unfortunately, um, if we talk about what we've learned, you know, unfortunately, what I've learned is that um, our brains tend to go for something that's familiar and our brains really like change and our brains, um, uh, we don't know how to react to something that is different towards uh, what we've known in our past. And that's why it's so difficult for people to change, really, because change is difficult and it actually changes the structure of your brain and it stretches your brain. So it's hard work. But getting back to the familiarity, the thing is we tend to go for people who resemble our, as we speak, hypnotic blueprint or like Mataling said, who resembles our script. So if you grew up in a household where your father was very dominating um, and, and very controlling and almost abusive, um, or even your mother, you know, whatever primary caregiver that is, or you grew up in a house, your house of origin then, as we say, was very tumultuous. It wasn't um, steady. There was a lot of fighting going on, etc. Then your brain tends to want to reciprocate that in adulthood. We want to, as adults or young adults, we want to do what our parents did, even though we say, I'm never going to be like my parents, or I'm never going to, I'm, I don't want a man like my husband, but subconsciously, uh, not my husband, my father, but subconsciously, we tend to go for, for that. And why? Uh, I mean, that's a very good question, because um, if you had, for example, a dad who constantly rejected you, why would you then go for a husband or a, or a partner that rejects you, you know? And the answer is just, to get you back into wholeness, to make you aware of it, to, to get you to a place where you can heal, actually heal that which has hurt you, you know? The saying goes that um, hurt people hurt other people, you know? And we need to literally stop the cycle and break the cycle of abuse and of addiction and of rejection and of pain and all of that. And it's good to be vulnerable, that's beautiful. But um, it's, it's also good to have insight. So if you are a young girl and you tend to go for this guy, let's call them the bad guys, right? Tend to go for the bad guys. 
take a step back and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Am I just trying to reciprocate my house of origin? Is just uh, this just familiar to me, you know? And um, am I going to take a, a leap of faith and invest in myself and heal all the past wounds, which it takes a lot of work and hard work, but to heal that pain so that I can change my my bad boy tendency to going for the good guy, you know, because good guys, for some girls, good guys tend to be boring. And it's true. It's true. Uh, there's a book, uh, Women Who Love Too Much. And in that book, they discuss why most women go for the bad guys, you know. Sorry, mm. bad guys, but uh, that's just the case. But I if I can if stop you, if I can stop you there, um, what is the definition of a bad guy? Uh, what's the definition? It's 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 relative, yeah. There's mm. no good guy or bad guy because <laughs> I think sometimes people are sometimes good and sometimes they're bad. So you can't really say somebody's bad simply because they've done something bad to you. Because to somebody else, let's say for instance, if a guy leaves a woman, that woman would define that guy or that partner, because it's not necessarily just a guy, that partner as a bad person. But the person that would have received this person, this guy or this partner, would say, this person is good. They came to me and they, you know, so, so there's no good or bad. It depends which side of this you are standing. So there's no good or bad guy. So even if we say we like bad guys or we like good guys, um, it's always relative. It is. We agree. It is indeed. I don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're good mind. guys, they're bad guys, no. Mm. No, 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 like no, no, human beings. Mm. no, 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 I think you that is uh, coming from a sound kind of thought perspective, but let's deal with the realness of women. Number one, as much as we would love women to realize that they get into relationships because of purpose, they know what they want, they need to find themselves, primarily relationships are defined by socialization. They're defined by more of the outside world because none of my parents taught me how to date. Mm. I didn't find my, my, my partner through understanding my parents. I now realize that the voids from my childhood have presented me with a partner that allows me to deal with those voids, whether I like them or not. But in society, there are bad guys. And these bad guys are what we classify as Casanovas, guys who can't determine if they want to date one girl or 20 at once. And good guys are primarily seen as guys that can handle one relationship or at a time and be consistent and devote a little bit of time and at least give a girlfriend what they would like it's an exchange but where ladies are you gonna get the from a bad guy ladies out there do you agree because if people run to casanovas it means casanovas are lovable so, are they a type <laughs> well no, we don't, we don't we just view the there. fact that they are lovable and they yeah. are hot but the problem is the behavior and yeah. these behaviors unfortunately are, are come with the package so it doesn't yeah. mean they're good or bad but it's societally their mannerisms and how they deal with women i mean come on oh yeah. oh we all know I there's a disagree bad. no good or bad it's about people and their choices uh if you choose to be with somebody who's a cousin it is your choice because nobody's holding you or you're not in shackles to stay with a person if they are a Casanova, if, if, if you don't want to be part of that team, because that's it. <laughs> also, that's I think team. we can flip, we can also flip the coin and say that I don't think anyone walks into a relationship knowing that this is a bad guy. A bad guy reveals, or a bad guy reveals his tendencies as and when the relationship unfolds. So, I, I, so I think to, to, to label people good and bad, but I do understand what uh, Tilsa's point was, um, but this was just for 
just to, to unpack uh, the, 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 the statement. I don't think you walk into a relationship, okay, we all do want good people in our lives, but you don't necessarily walk in there saying that I want a bad guy. Um, it's their tendencies and what they get up to that is then labeled as bad to the person in particular. I agree perfectly. So memory, you've summed it up. So yeah. it's these perceptions. <laughs> I said, don't agree. Celestia, what, what, what's your take on this? Would you say there are bad guys or good guys? I think um, it depends on, if I say bad guy, I, I agree with the Casanova statement, um, but to be, make it more, to make it more subjective and to make it more personal, I'd say uh, the quintessential bad guy for me, and that would just be for me, for example, speaking to my wound, would be the guy that rejects you, uh, that doesn't make you feel lovable, that doesn't make you uh, feel like he's number one, that doesn't make you sit on his lap, that, that makes you uh, feel that you irritate him, that doesn't want to take your calls, that doesn't watch up you back, that makes you uncertain, all of that. But that's my wound. That's, that would be my subjective bad guy. For another girl uh, who didn't grow up in my house with my father, she would take that as, oh, well, whatever. You know, I like this guy. He's cool. And, uh, you know, that wouldn't bother her. So I think it's yeah. a very individual thing. Now, if your brain has been used to that bad guy, you know, bad guy, where's this now, bad guy, <laughs> then... <laughs> For me, for example, just a personal uh, thing to make a mind shift to go for the good guy, meaning the one that calls, the one that pays attention, the one that loves you, the one that actually gets a little bit wimpy and uh, soft. <laughs> that makes it difficult for your brain to then yeah. go for the good guy. You yeah. understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, so tonight, yeah. So tonight, I think, I think, as the host, I think uh, at least I'm enjoying the pleasures of being the host and of saying things. So for the women out there, it is important to understand that um, as soon as you label somebody bad, like I think like Tunisia, what, what you're saying with, with childhood wounds or, you know, if, if you're labeling somebody bad, it's important to look at what do they represent in your life and, and maybe deal with that. Because you, mm. you've also said Tunisia that um, some women would be fine with that because they didn't grow up mm. under the same circumstances. So you've just yep. actually answered it, that there is nothing wrong with the partner, but there's everything wrong. No, not wrong. But the woman who allows themselves to get into a relationship that is not serving their needs is the one that needs to look at themselves. Because mm. we look at a lot of women that are suffering in relationships and mm. we are so lucky to, to have the tools that we have to understand mm -hmm. things better and mm -hmm. to know that when certain things happen in a certain way, they are never about your partner, but it, it, it is always about you, regardless yeah. of what the partner does. I know, um, I'm sure a lot of people will say, no, there's nothing like that. But if, if you look at yourself, you can really free yourself from attracting that partner that doesn't serve your your needs because you understand better what wounds you need to heal for your for your life so um we also look at young women that will uh, but i'm glad these days uh, a lot of young women are not too tied up into into relationships mm. and it is more which is a question that i want to throw at, at all of you um a lot of young women don't um, don't really commit to serious relationships. So we see a lot of young women that would be in this relationship or in that relationship, or they start this one, they stop, they go into that one. And it's much easier for them. And, um, but, but I'm not sure whether is, is that what we want to do these days where we find um, people not really being in committed relationships. Is that the trend that, that is there? Um, and I'm also seeing the, um, the trend of more the physical part. And again, it's another question that I'm posing to you. So the physical nature of relationships these days is taking over, that's my opinion, it's taking over the emotional and you know, like the cushy cushy uh, part. So are young people nowadays preferring to, to go for relationships that are not non-committal? 
Okay. If I may have a jab at your lovely statement there. Um, what women are doing nowadays, I think, to be honest, they are very, they, 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 are, they are actually reflecting a lot of themselves and their independence with the, when it comes to relationships. I think gone are the days where we are going to be in a society where they're bad guys or good guys. Real women are seeing more of themselves and they are making decisions that they don't have to feel uncomfortable about. So I think also love and relationshiping has been molded around um, what society feels. And there are lots of things that make it uncomfortable and have made it uncomfortable before. But now the new generation, they are cutting above those kinds of norms. And they are saying to themselves, I'm choosing who I like. I'm sleeping who with whom I like to sleep with. And it's no longer about if I'm not in a committed relationship, what does it mean to the outside world? And sex is no longer a taboo thing. So hey, this they, month, they will cut us. Don't mention those names on, on Facebook. You don't mention the, you, you you call it love dance or or something oh, else. Dance. Okay. Yeah, they'll switch us off. You don't know these people, <laughs> hey? They switch us off. <laughs> so I mean, um, women are more; uh, they're exploring more now, and they're becoming more sensual, and they want to experience more with their bodies. They want to know their bodies. They're interested in knowing and finding out with their partners. So there's a lot of things that are happening, and it's more like a liberation. Women want women. I think women want guys that are fair. Guys that can be their buddies, guys that they can have a drink with. So being buddies is fair. Is that what you say? Being buddies is fair because you can tell you can tell your friend the honest truth. Memory agree. Um to an extent, to an extent, I, I do echo a point uh, to say that women of today know their worth. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it a trend in your in your terminology to say people are, are hopping into relationships in and out. However, uh, they know their worth and they don't stick around for long. If it doesn't work, then tough. It was nice meeting you. Um, I'm moving on to someone else. Um, so yeah, I do echo Unati's Unati's. Mm. I'm not sure. Well, it, of course, I said. Um, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of young women, and you know, not not re like favoring more the physical interaction as opposed to being in a committed relationship. But why is there so much pain? Because there's still pain. Um, a lot of women are going through a lot of pain, or is it older women? So, so, so the question is around young women are are, are going for looks rather than the inner beauty i don't know i'm asking i don't know i think women are becoming more liberated the yeah. whole pink lens effect is becoming shorter and shorter women are starting to say you don't have to be pretty but if your pocket is pretty i'll go for you darling and i might not stay because i know my worth and I'm going to prospect elsewhere. So women are no longer afraid. They have, they have, but with, they have... with that, Unati, you can also say that maybe women of today are then looking for love in the wrong places. Where is because the wrong place? The pocket. I would say the pocket is a wrong place. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> the pocket is a good place, so, uh, Memory. So if it's in the wrong place, why are they all going there if it's wrong? Because we have a perception that where there is the bag, there is happiness, only to find that you do get the bag and then you do not get the letter. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think women are realizing realizing and also visible. with the influence of social media, um, I don't know if I can mention that other platform uh, that sells us all a dream where people um, 
share with us their lavishness uh, and so essentially sell sell each other dreams so we all think that so you you can find yourself with the right person or in the right space however it's not what it looks like on a particular social network site do you, do you not yeah you you're very right do you not think that's what is creating a lot of problems because a lot of people it, it definitely it, is it it, it definitely is, is. Uh, that the the social media platforms not only influence um, in my in the space that I work in, which is marketing, but it also influences in the lives that we live outside of our jobs. Um, what we tend to see is what we tend to think is real, and most of the time it's not real. Um, mm. We believe or think, or I th I believe or I think that women look for love in the pocket thinking that it's going to bring happiness it's going to bring joy and then only to find that it, it it just after climbing one great hill you find that there are many other hills to climb mm. so so from what you're saying could could we say um at a young age women don't experience problems like serious problems it's only when they want to settle down do they want to settle down do women really want to settle down I think after 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 a while you you would want to settle down when you are tired when when you are tired when you've discovered that even if he has money it's not it's not the one even if he's got a business even if he's got a corporate job even if he's got an MBA after you've explored your tick box then you would want to settle I think. Mm. Mm. Your thoughts, Chilicia? Your Sorry. thoughts. My, my connection is poor because I'm on my phone and uh, because, oh yeah, sorry uh, I didn't really have time to switch to a desktop um so you can either give me three minutes to try and put it on my desktop but if you can oh, yeah, it, you're it, actually it. breaking up a bit yeah you, you're okay. breaking up a bit I'm bre yeah breaking up so let me leave yeah try to leave this but and I'm coming. joining on my desktop I'm gonna try okay okay awesome. that's fine that's good. Wild. that's good okay all right Okay, so um, Unati memory. So women are known as as naturals. So um, in most relationships, they they usually take the lead in making sure that the relationship works. Um, but sometimes we find a woman who's trying to build um that relation and nurture the relationship. Um, sometimes them being the ones that are suffering in the relationship versus a woman that doesn't really look after the nature the, the the relationship so would you say um like in this case i mean i, I just need your, your opinions on that where you find a woman who who doesn't even contribute anything into the relationship whether emotionally maybe physically we don't know but maybe um but you find those two types of women, one that's really invested in the relationship, one that is not even related, that, that does not even look after the, the partner, um, but both relationships. So the one is suffering, one is not suffering, it's actually the partner that may be suffering. So in that case, um, would we say it's just a natural progression of, li of love life uh, for women, or is it a timing thing? Or is, as Chilicia was saying, is it something that is related to uh, their past because we carry a lot of from our past would you say it's from that what would cause those different scenar uh, 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 scenarios okay so i think we also need to realize one thing that we we as women are all different and we can't take that away from the conversation no matter how much you see a particular thing it's completely completely subjective it's subject to the merits of the relationship and what we see might not be what it is and the only way that we can be able to ascertain general stats is to be able to say we are commenting on a platform where we are probable so in my opinion um having a having a guy that offers you finance is not not necessarily a bad thing it might mean that i know how to give myself happiness 
and I'm content with that. And I, I, there's just a couple of other things that I'm short of, and I, I'm going out there to find them. In other situations, me being having a guy that's not financially stable might also mean that I would like to match up to that particular guy. So it's completely, completely sub it's subject to that relationship. But I believe women, to the core, there are they are fundamentals that they want in a relationship. They want a guy that is able to look at them in the eyes and give them a sense of confidence, a sense of certainty about the relationship. So if a guy gives that to a girl, the, the probability of the lady staying is higher than somebody who's not given certainty in a relationship. And this well, can go let's on for there. Sure. Let's pack it there. So, sorry to, dis to disturb you, but let's pack it there. Is it really true that simply because somebody is giving you attention, yet the partner is giving you attention, that makes a woman to stay in the relationship? I agree with that statement. <laughs> okay. I simply okay, agree so with that. <laughs> I, I've, I've heard women that have left their relationships because the partner is too much. The partner is all over them. And that goes back to what Telicia said about your experiences in your childhood. So if you, yeah, uh, not to hold on to your thoughts, sorry, I know I'm disturbing your, your trail of thought, of thought. So if in your, in your uh, when you're growing up, uh, you had a family that was like too nurturing all over you and protective, chances are you will want a partner that's gonna give you space. If you're attracting the same kind of person, it's because you need to learn to love that. And then it could be the opposite where you, you, you have a partner that doesn't even really look at you, that doesn't spend time with you. And maybe it, it suits you. So uh, it's not necessarily that if, if somebody says, uh, watches you and they follow you and they phone you a hundred times, then that's what every woman wants. Is, am I wrong? Okay, there's, continue. There's, there's well, attention. We'll continue okay. next. Yeah. I think just there's attention yeah. and the obsession. Okay. Attention. Hey, when <laughs> so true, true, true memory. Yeah. So for me, um, all relationships need attention. Relationship is like your business. It's like a relationship you have with a career. It needs attention. Now, it is the level or the degree of attention that we can talk about, but all relationships require attention. They require you to open up, to be vulnerable, and they require you to grow. Relationships are about growth. So... It, can I also we, add compromise on, on, onto that one? No, I don't think it's about compromise. I completely disagree, but anyway, I get your point. I'll add compromise as well. But, but then why, why are you disagreeing with her on compromise? Because I believe it's a fair exchange. For example, I'll give an, a valid example. Um, so in the holidays, there are things I'm not willing to do. And my partner feels that I need to compromise. What I then do is that I have a value proposition. I'll say that um, because you like this, we i will give you i will give you that in my form and i will allow you to receive it in my form because remember if you compromise the guy does not realize who you are you are you are saying okay let me let me because it gives me what i want let me also give but him but also ladies i think it's also safe to say that compromise is not only for the lady even the guy will compromise as well. I know this discussion is just around women, but compromise is a two-way street as well. I understand. Can I maybe just get in get in here on the compromise uh, part memory? Um, it's like uh, Matt, it's like Jody always speaks about the win-win, you know, uh -huh. uh, where you kind of go into um, 
if your partner wants to do something over the holidays, for example, like Anati said, and you don't want to, then you have your value proposition, you, you meet a midway where you say, okay, let, let's go into a win-win. So how can we both win with this? Okay, I'm going to sleep late and then you'll do the dishes, whatever the, yeah. the thing is. We both then feel validated and valued in the relationship. Um, I do believe there's, there's a space for compromise, but not... Uh, to such an extent sacrifice. that you become the one that you are actually so, yeah, that you feel that, that absolutely and that you feel that you are in a victim triangle and you you also feel persecuted the whole time and then you have to start thinking is is the compromising of uh, getting close to being abused you know and there's another word I'm throwing in there <laughs> yeah all right Unati Okay, so for me, relationships are about fair exchange, right? So fair exchange means that you, your partner gets to find out about you and you get to find out about your partner. And these things allow you guys to come together to a more of a midpoint, right? And at the midpoint, you then ask yourselves valuable questions. And these questions allow you to be able to say, wow, Maybe my relationship can look like this. Maybe my relationship can look like that. But if we, if you, as a partner, you're constantly getting something and the partner, the other partner is giving something, it's not going to be a nice little balance. So I believe because relationships are growth platforms for all of us, whether you stay in the relationship or you leave later, it's an opportunity for you to grow. And in there, you, you get presented with something that is fair that's why i said lady women tend to want fairness where if i've done something wrong you can critically criticize me but that doesn't mean i'm the worst thing under the sun it means that you have an opportunity to love someone that has done that and learn from that so it, it's it's a fair if you understand the the concept of girlfriends women look for girlfriends in men so if I have a good relationship with my mom or my dad, I'm going to tend to look for that. And we, we forget that our relationships are sitting on, on, on goods and bads anyway, because you oscillate as a human being throughout your life. So if I have attracted someone who's got a, a good relationship with my mom, right? And then, there, but there are things I don't really like about my mom. So it comes with a package that, that, that my partner might have those traits that I don't like about my mom. And they are what they causes suffering in the relationship because I don't want to Who, deal with suffering. Them. Who's suffering in that relationship? You, the, the woman. Person. Yeah, the partner. Okay. So whoever suffers, if a woman suffers in a relationship, it's more of a fact that you are infatuated with this friend of yours. But when this friend comes to you and tells you how horrible you've been like your mom did, you tend to shy away, you pull your back, you're no longer vulnerable, you're isolated on the other side, forgetting that a person is whole. We have all the sides, the bad side and the good side. So I think um, women, the more women get to know about themselves, the more women get to know about their purpose and express it with themselves, they're going to find partners that are going to meet them halfway. So, for example, I love money. And I feel partners that can give a value proposition that is financial are good. It's not about looking at the pocket. You must look at the pocket. <laughs> you must. It's important. So, so even if you don't look at, even even if you don't accept that you're looking at the pocket, you are looking at the pocket. Of course. But is it true? Is it true? Is that a fact? Is that a fact? Because we do have relationships where um, the, the, the partner is not necessarily uh, able to provide financially and the relationship is still working. And we've also seen... I've personally seen lots of women turn their backs away from the bag and choose happiness 
and say that I had everything. I had a big house. I had a big car, but I was not happy. I was not whole. And they left all of that. And they left the comfort. Mm. So I think the, the, the love conversation really, it's, it's, it's a very broad one. Uh, it, it's, it's a very extremely broad. Um, mm. And I don't know, I think people are also sharing their sentiments on the chat. Yeah. Is it, is it now thing, that think we... this, this, this word I can't mention, but it's primarily the dance. Guys, let's not run away from the yes, women the love dance. the dance. The women love the dance. If the guy is not doing the dance, baby, you're not going to get it. You're not going to stay there for long. Who? What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Why do you mean you're not going to stay there? She means if he's not rich and he can't do a love love dance, a lack of love dance, <laughs> she's yeah. out of there. That's what she she's, says. she's not <laughs> there. <laughs> okay, so at least something has to be there. So, so <laughs> if it's not financial, at least it has to be physical. No, it has to be both. You know, you know what he says. It has to be a both. balance. Oh, it has to be both. <laughs> I but, know, but, ladies. But that when when you're talking about Casanovas, when you're speaking about Casanovas. Would you say they are more on the dance side than the financial part? Because if they've got ten girlfriends, uh, they're not gonna support all of them. Uh, you know, gone are those days when when we had we saw men that were were having like we're supporting uh, many 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 women. They still are, I'm sure. Um, but the, the the Casanovas that I think you referred to earlier on are those ones that maybe are very good at the dance, but not necessarily financially providing. Well, memory, because you're in the marketing profession, um, <laughs> I do know that <laughs> I do know that um, the the dating environment is like a it's a marketing platform. You you put your best foot forward. So if the dance, if you are a more probable candidate in the dance, you are by far going to attract a lot of women. That is not a joke. And women are we we need we can't be afraid to say women are attracted to guys that that are good dancers or are, are good operators. I'm not sure what to call operators. them. Operators, yo. Now these these levels are going up, huh? Mm. They're not just dancers now. They're now they're operators. Okay, they'll be engineers very soon. And um, <laughs> orchestrators. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's greatest. laughs> yeah. What is precious? Precious is saying yes, baby. Let's dance. Not forgetting to be spontaneous, eh? Yes, Unati. I think yeah. Even uh, not just in the bedroom, but also in the sitting room or on the carpet. I think um, like you say, I really want to <laughs> confirm that um, I think women are becoming more and more liberated, but also with that um, knowing what they want and. Uh, yeah. And I think that can be very good, but I think that can also be very, very difficult. Though at least challenging, at least. Let me say, not difficult, but challenging. But in what way? Challenging in what way? Remember in the we sense... said... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, continue. Remember we said? No, I'm saying we were talking about how women, uh, I mean, they, they have their options open. So yeah. they don't want too much commitment. Uh, they yeah. dance, they leave, they dance somewhere else and they leave yeah. and they're okay with that. Yeah, that's that's maybe some women. But what happens if you have uh, women who know what they want and they have this set box of this is, you know, the quintessential tall, dark, handsome, very rich, educated, must love dogs, long walks on the beach, holding hands, for example. <laughs> But now you you don't meet that person. You meet someone totally different. But you like them. You know, how do you break through that mold? How do you... That's just a question that I generally sit with, in a sense. Mm. And you don't want to just dance and dance from the one dance to the next dance and have a lot of dances because you don't want to have those dancing yeah. feet diseases and stuff. I think in that sense... Whatever, that's I don't know. It's, not your, it's not in your... Even your religious... Uh, swear to do that, you know. So, what do you do? I think that's when okay, memory. Th that's when that's when your heart then leads you. Mm. That's when you listen to your heart and not your brain. Yeah. And what do you do, memory, with that? 
and you allow yourself to be vulnerable and let your guard down and experience exact everything and just play it by the ear if i can say it that way mm. Mm. but allow yourself and immerse yourself in in that and not be strategic and not be tactical about it but just go in there with a blank check really mm. Mm. All right. So uh, I'm looking at time, and I just want us to touch on one other to one other topic. Uh -huh. um, there are very oh, few women. flies while you're having fun. Wow. Maybe maybe it's not a fact, but it's just from my own personal observation. Um, where there are very few women that love themselves totally. You know, they mm. love everything about themselves. They love how they speak, how they walk their bodies, regardless of shape and size. But then there's a, there's a huge number of women, a percentage of women that don't really love themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes through, you know, criticizing yourself because mm -hmm. we are very good at criticizing ourselves and seeing everything wrong about, about us. Mm. And that could translate into um, our relationships where we look at ourselves in, in a hateful way and mm. we take that into the relationships, hoping that the partner will see us differently. So how can we advise women that are very self-critical and that don't really see the true nature of who they are and how they are? Because I believe that whatever they are, however they are, it's exactly how they are meant to be. It's exactly how they can have their own impact. But they would probably compare themselves to other women, like as we were saying earlier on, you know, like on Instagram or on some shows and the filters and everything that make women seem like they're something else different than what they are exactly. So how do we bridge that, that gap where we say to women, whatever you are is what you bring into the relationship and if you bring hate self-hate that's what you will bring into that relationship you will translate that into your into your partner and expect your partner to love you whereas you you seeing bad about you so i know very few women some one of them is right here with us who who who, who is never self-critical about themselves That's a very valid question, Matt. Um, and I think to start off with, it's very important, especially for the younger girls, to know that you can't find your value in anybody else. I mean, you cannot find your worth or your value in a partner. And your partner does not define you. Your partner may may play a crucial role in, in, in where you are or in life, for example. I, I, I tend to say... Be picky about your partner because they they resemble you or they they show what what your how can I say what what's deep inside of you. So be picky about your partner, but don't pick a partner just to feel worse about yourself, right? And um, the other thing is to believe that you're enough. And uh, if you have to write "I am enough" on on your wall or on your mirror at home and say it to yourself so that your brain can hear it the whole time, then you will start believing it and uh, stop comparing yourself, like you said, Matt, and um, really get into a zone where you need to do the, the healing part and meditation and investing in yourself and self-love, self-care, be kind to your mind. Put yourself first because we know if you aren't filled, you, you have nothing to give. Put the mask on yourself if the plane is falling. Otherwise, you won't be able to give somebody else air if you die. I think that's mm. the concept, right? Mm. All right. Um, and I'll just echo... Oh, Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll just echo uh, T's, T's sentiments here. There's a there's a, a quote that I, I also just use when I'm also not feeling uh, my best self is that you cannot pour from an empty cup. Um, you yeah. need to be whole in order for people to to pour from you. You know, in order to give out the love, you need to be complete mm -hmm. and you need to be in 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 your in your space. You know, you you need to. It all starts with you. Um, but the short of the long is that you cannot pour from an empty cup. So make sure that your cup is full. 
Make sure at all times, make sure that your cup is full and forgive yourself um, for whatever that 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 you would have thought that I don't know. Like what I think we we carry a lot of mistakes that I should have I should have done this I should have done this maybe if I didn't do this forgive yourself for whatever reason you know mm -hmm. don't wait for another person to come and apologize everything must start from you whatever you expect from another person needs to come from you first absolutely love that Unati? so for me it boils down to women finding more about themselves know thyself be thyself and you will love thyself mm -hmm. to to love someone else you need to love yourself yes. and it's a, a portrayal of something there's a, a a quote i read in a book by waldo uh, um, emerson it says the enemy of truth is generally not the lie but it's the myth it's the myth, and it's, it's the myth that we feed ourselves with. And this creates a continuum beyond ourselves. So being true to self is so valuable because it allows the, everybody else around you to give them their truth to you because you give yourself an opportunity for truth. So for me, um, women are more simple in terms of what they want and times are changing it's becoming a bit easier but when you know yourself you carry less baggage you carry less um, pain and frustration from past relationships into the next one you heal easier because you know yourself so for me that's so so important for women because it's the essence of starting anything. And it, it's women that have no confidence, that don't know themselves, that we need to reach out to, that we can help because we have the tools that we can help and they can see things differently. You, you so. just mentioned something that is also very um, ironical because um, you, you just said women are easy and it's true women are easy but when you look at the jokes that go around about how complicated women are and how people don't understand how men don't understand women it's like we are this complicated mushy mush of of thing where people don't really understand what women want and how women behave but women are actually very easy so from my side my tip um somebody called me this week because I had posted something about self-love and self-hate. And I mentioned that it's very easy for women to self-hate. And one of the tricks of really looking at yourself in the mirror and loving everything about yourself as a woman is that you could look at what you hate in other people because when you self-hate, you, 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 you it, it means you have things that you hate in other people as well. So mm. because it's so difficult to love yourself, look at people around you and look at the things that you hate about those people. Because the things that you hate about those people is just that right now, obviously we can't go deeper into that because there are mm. tools like Kunat was mentioning. There are mm. tools to, to, to work on that. But for now, as a woman, it's women's man, the tip that we can give you is that look at, start with like uh, three people that you feel have got things that you hate, that you don't really like. And use those things that you don't like, that you hate in others to try and trace back what do they remind you of? Where do they stem from? And start to love those things. The things, the very things that you hate in others, start to love those things. And you will see that the more you start to love the things you hate in other people is the more you start to love yourself as a, as a woman. And it is the more you will start to take that into all of your relationships, whether it's love relationships, uh, work relationships, social settings, and everywhere else. 
So you need, it is important that you start to look at yourself and love yourself, but you can, you can overcome that by loving the things that you hate in other people. And when you love those things in other people, it will be easier to love yourself because you hate yourself because you hate other people, but it is always about you. So, sure. um, so and guys, we have, yes, Nati. And guys, uh, the dance is not only because uh, it's being offered, it's because it's an exchange. Women are out there getting what they want, not because they want to be labeled, but because they find the dance something that they can bargain with. It's no longer a relationship, um, what do you call it? It's not like a, a relationship kind of um, tick box exercise. You don't have to have the dance when you're in a relationship. So men also oh. need to go easy. Men also need to go easy on women because the dance becomes a serious perception. Well, now you've started a new topic and we, we are done for tonight. We will take this into the next conversation. The dance and partners and hi, yes. Nancy, hey. <laughs> Thank you Yo, so much, amazing, ladies. Eh? <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Do you get it now? Yes, baby, we get it now. You get I it get now. it now. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. And we really hope that um, we'll continue because Unati has now started another topic. So we yeah. have to continue on that topic because, yes, yes, we know that the love dance, hey, that one is going it's to very really... important. Very I important. Know, I know a lot of people want that topic. A lot of people want to discuss that. So we will be discussing that in one of our next sessions. So yes. we hope that you can join us and you can comment and we will reply to as many of you as possible. So thank you very much for joining us. Good night. Goodbye. Thank, thank you, you, girls. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye.